Okay, today we have an Apollo 2000. This is a battery operated tin robot and um, it was sent in from one of my viewers on YouTube, one of my subscribers. And as per my request, when the toy is sent, I'm trying to move the camera, that's why I'm hesitating. I request that they are sent double box, so that, hence this big box. This is the top that would normally be folded down, and this is the inside box. So it was a double box. Everything had bubble wrap around it and everything. But as you can see, even double boxed, it gets crushed in. And then there was also stickers on here that says, please accept our apology for the damage done by a spill from an improperly packaged parcel. We have determined that the spilled material is non-hazardous. So, this is one of the main reasons why I don't do a lot of repairs for a lot of my subscribers on YouTube. It's because they don't realize how expensive the shipping is going to be both ways. This is a very big box. Last time I sent a box this size, um, priority mail, it cost over $70. That's each way. So, I mean, you're up to like 140 bucks. In this case, I'm not really quite sure what service to use. It isn't marked priority on anywhere, but the box was marked like 40 some odd dollars. So again, you'll, you'll be into it 80 bucks before I even done anything to the robot. But if you don't double box them, the toy's gonna get, get ruined. So you kinda, it almost doesn't pay to do it, you know, it becomes very expensive. Now I'm trying to turn the camera back to the robot so we can get on with that. So the first thing I do when I take them out of the box is I do a basic visual inspection of it. And the first thing I can notice is that the whole head area here is crushed in. And that wouldn't have been done from shipping damage because it was packed too well. It's because somebody's already been in here before. More proof of that is on this side here. See this tab, this long tab here, that should be on the inside. It's on the outside now. That little tab should be on the inside. That big tab up in the top of the neck up in there should be on the inside. The rest of the robot looks pretty good. I always check the battery box too. It's sent here for not working. And uh, these contacts look good. This contact looks good. But this contact, let's try turning on the light. See if this will help. There we go. This contact here has definitely got a problem. Feels like this isn't connected to anything inside. So I mean that could uh, have something to do with it not working. But uh, my biggest fear is that since someone's been in there before and obviously they couldn't fix it, you know, what's really going on? Well the only way we're going to find out, and when someone's already been in there, that means the tabs have already been bent once. You never know whether you can get one more bend out of them or not. We need to take the shoulder piece off first to get in there, which involves these little tabs here and here. Then these ones we should be able to pry up. Those holes are when you put it back together and you straighten the tab out, it goes in. You poke something small and hard in there, like a little drill bit or something pointy, and that bends the tab again. But uh, in order to get the top off, we've got to start with these. And they seem to be folded so flat that I'm going to take the edge of a blade to kind of get to kind of get under it here. And once I can get it up a little, then I can go at it with a screwdriver, or I can go at it with a needle nose, or uh, I'm trying to keep a little of this on camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. So once you kind of get it up a little bit, then you can. Get on there and very carefully move slowly. The quicker you move this thin metal, the more heat is built up in the micro bend and the metal will break quicker. If you make your movements slow so that you're not stressing the metal. Okay, those two tabs look pretty good. Let's get a flat blade screwdriver on here and start working this up. Here we go. There we go. It's 
So here's those two tabs on the back. You can see how they're bent in. When we put it back together, then we'll re-bend those. For now, though, we'll just kind of straighten them up a little bit. So this was the uh, the fly eye version, but not with the uh, lit. Some of the robots with the fly eyes will actually have a light inside the head. And you can see this is all bent, so we might as well straighten this out some while we have it here. That looks pretty good. And let's get in here, because what we wanted to find out is why that one tab in the battery box was so loose. And it would appear, when staring here, that this plastic is all broken. And that is going to account why that is so loose. So if in order to repair that, this is going to be a two-part video, because I'm going to have to uh, make myself a piece of plastic in there and then glue it back in place to reinforce that battery contact. But we don't need to worry about that quite yet. Let's go a little bit further with this. There's some tabs on the uh, inside in here. There's one right here. You can straighten that a little bit. That one's already pretty much straight from whoever opened it up last. Sorry, most of this isn't on camera, but what can you do? So you can see there's little metal tabs here and up here that actually hold it together when things are going back together and we'll we'll have to straighten a lot of that out. I don't want to bend it any more than necessary because like I say I know they've already been bent before. So now we can get in and we can actually see a lot of what's going on. We can see the motor. Let's uh, move this part out. Good, the top of the motor has a, uh, a brass pinion. That's good because the ones that have a plastic one, generally the plastic gear will have to be replaced. But in this case, it shouldn't need replacing. Feel quite a bit of resistance there. We might need to lube that up. The switch is coming down. We might try jumping some power into this thing and see if we can get the motor running so we can find out the condition of the motor and whether we need to. Uh, do any cleaning of the motor brushes or anything like that. I got a little AA battery pack here. I'm going to put some uh, alligator clips on. Normally I would just hold the ends of the wires from the battery thing up in there, but since I'm trying to keep stuff kind of aimed at the camera at the same time, it's kind of hard to do. Now, I don't know if this is a negative or a positive frame, but I'll connect my negative to the frame to start with. See how that goes. The positive is going to frame, it looks like. have to take this apart even further. To see if we can get things running. Okay. So if one side of the lights go here, that means the other side of the lights. Yeah. This should have had it running. So there is a uh, 
either a wiring problem or a motor problem. And we can take this apart further, and I guess we're going to have to. So you have these tabs on the sides. Then go to the gearbox. Again, just try to get them up uh, far enough where you can get hold of them with some needle nose and straighten them out. Like so. And then again on this side. Basically what will be holding this on there now will be the, uh, the wiring. Pull it inside off like that. Okay, we'll rejoin on part two.